So I want to open it up to the students before we get to our, our final questions. There's, there's so much that you opened up, which is amazing. And I want to start with, uh, with Yara and your, your question about neuroscience and fashion. Oh, so I just said, um, how can like, neuroscience be used in the fashion world? Like, is there a connection? So there's a lot of, so neuroscience now, there's, if you type neuroscience fashion, you will find loads of work. Neuroscience architecture, neuroscience design, like this, it's just lot, lots of work. The, there's many versions of what, what neuroscientists are doing in the world of fashion. First of all, um, aesthetics. So when you look at something and you say, do I find it pretty or not? This finding it pretty or not happens in your brain. We now know how to actually look and assess your, your expertise and we actually know how to assess your image as a creator, an image of the viewer or the person who wears this, this experience. So there's, there's one thing. There's also a lot of work right now on what we call engagement, which is, uh, let's say you created a dress and you want this dress not to be sold to just one person, but you want it to be mass produced. Like you, want, you think that you want this dress to be popular by a lot of people, like you want a lot of people to enjoy it. We now learn that there's ways to actually measure the brain of many, many people and see what's common to all of them. And we call this engagement. One of the working definitions for neuroscience right now is if something makes a lot of brains look the same when they experience that, it's engaging. So engaging movies are ones that uh, no matter where you are, old, young, men, women, black, white, no matter who you are, when you see this movie, your brain looks the same. Like the movie is amazing in taking over your brain and making you look like the core identity of who you are. And everyone behaves the same way when they watch this movie. So we call this movie engaging because it operates on all brains at the same time. Same in fashion. Somehow you can now create a dress and bring 10 subjects to the lab and have these people look at the dress, just look at them and look at their brain while they look at it. And you say, okay, this dress makes all the brain look the same when they watch it or when they wear it. And this dress is less so. Some people look this way, some people look this way. Might be these guys really like it, this one really hate it, but it's not as clearly making everyone looking the same. So when you go to mass production, it won't have an effect that will average across people. So you say, okay, if I have two options and I want one of them to be sold in a mass retailer versus for one wedding, this one might be the best one for mass retailer because it operates in the same brain at the same time. So you can look at the brain of the creator, the brains of the audience. And now we also have a little bit of like anecdotal interesting things, which is neuroscientists are now trying to also play with the, what we call brain machine interfaces and actually helping people uh, create uh, fragrances and, and, uh, and clothing and, and experiences that actually are matching the brain's experience. So we have, uh, clothes, that's anecdote, but clothes that actually uh, sense that you're uh, feeling sad because they have activity in your brain and they change their look a little bit. Or clothes that uh, they sense that you're getting cold and they close themselves a little bit more so you can actually have more insulation. They all can, they, they basically, because all those experiences of like sadness and happiness and temperature, and they're all happening in our brain. So if you can get a reading for that, you can actually feedback. But that's a small thing, but it's kind of fun to see how people use neuroscience to actually create all kinds of nice experiences.